Welcome back to the broadcast. Well, there are unwritten rules when it comes to behavior at those holiday parties, which are about to start pretty soon. So our lifestyle expert, Jamie O'Banion, uh, has the top 10 party etiquette tips to help you through this fun time of year. You're just, you're hosting with us, and you come and you do these segments. It's so and, fun. And um, your great website, 5 fabcom You Thank have all these you. fantastic tips. But it is that time of year. So it is. what is the first thing that we do, like the moment you get an invitation? The moment you get an invitation, the thing that most people don't do these days that they need to remember to do is to RCP. And RCP stands for Répondez s'il vous plaît, which is please respond in French. I never knew that. Yes, which is um, just a nice way of saying we need you to get back to us. And typically what's appropriate and acceptable is within two days of an invitation receipt to respond. And with Evite and um, the different uh, web-centered invitations, it's super easy to not only RCP, but to put it in your calendar. Right. And that becomes important if you've ever hosted something. When people don't respond, first of all, you're in a panic because you're thinking, are people coming? Are they not coming? Well, and then like food, food. drink, you want to make sure that you have you enough have for everybody. You know. So it's so important. And I feel like that's one of the things that this day and age, people don't do anymore and they need to do. So it's really important. It's really rude if you don't respond it if someone's taken the time to include you in something. So first and foremost, it's respond. Um, second is really decode the dress code and as we all know the imitation sets the tone for what the event or the soiree is going to be so if it's typically a more casual invite you can know that the dress is going to be a bit more casual right um, oftentimes a an invitation will delineate clearly uh, what is if it's casual if it's lunch and chic uh, block tie and in fact I had a really embarrassing almost embarrassing moment Lisa um, we had it was an invitation to a beautiful black and white party and we were he headed overseas and I had looked at the invitation and we got back that night and had to go straight there basically just throw on clothes and go and I thought that it said black tie so I almost wore this red Hervé Leger dress to this event, and can you imagine? It a would black have been, and white event, yes, and you're wearing and I'm wearing red. red. So it's so, and I did it at the last moment. I chose black, and then on the way there, I said, "Oh my gosh, to my husband, I'm so glad that I did." So right. if you don't know, ask the host. So that's really important that you're setting the tone and that you know, um, you know what you're supposed to wear. It now, confuses me when people say Dallas chic, <laughs> right? I mean, what is that? That's just, as opposed uh, to New York chic. Right. Or, I, I, that's always a confusing one for me. But okay, so definitely you want to find out what cocktail chic is. Kind of Dallas chic is. Um, yeah. Next is be punctual. And what's appropriate is in within 15 minutes of what the invitation time says that the event begins is acceptable. Anything after that is is considered rude. So you want to be punctual. And then on the flip side of that, Lisa, you don't want to be too early. Yes. Yeah, see, that's what I'm surprised mm -hmm. you're saying. Like 15 minutes within the start time of the uh -huh. party because when I have parties at my house I, I, I am actually annoyed if people show up early yes right? because your last 10 minutes especially if you're serving hot things mm -hmm. that's your that's your prep time it's your oh my gosh I gotta go throw my clothes on time yeah. so don't arrive early and we say within 15 minutes of the invitation uh, start time next is don't bring someone who's not invited because it becomes very awkward particularly when food is involved um, if there's not a place setting for them um, if it's more casual and you know the host then I mean certainly um, a text ahead or a call ahead to ask. But just and it'll usually say plus one. Yeah, right? exactly. And next is say hello. And we want to remind you that uh, when you're entering an event, you need to find the hostess or the host within the first 10 minutes and say hello. If they're in the middle of a conversation, someone asked me this yesterday, what do I do? Um, physical touch is really important. You can just put a hand on an elbow or a back and when it's the appropriate time and there's a break in the conversation conversation naturally you can address them and say you know you're so good to see you thank you for including me um, next is arrive with a gift I think that that's one that um, a lot of people overlook but just a little sussy a little something um, and also I think it's really important to know when to stop if it's an event that's serving alcohol you need to know when don't be the drunk crazy person thank you, at Lisa, my house for just saying please. it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, next is gauge your exit, know when it's appropriate to leave. Um, lastly is to give proper thanks. And the one thing I want to say, um, and the one gift that you should never bring and is a perfect thank you is flowers. Never bring flowers to an event because typically the hostess or the host already has their table arrangement out and they feel inclined to put yours out as well. Right. And typically they, you won't naturally have picked what flowers you are right. going to bring. That's to a really good tip because it seems like a reasonable thing to bring to somebody. But right. um, I think wine a candles, bottle of wine is always nice. Else, and then it's a perfect thank you. So afterwards you can send flowers the day after as a thank you for a lovely, lovely evening. I can you do that. that if you don't bring a gift? If you don't bring a gift, 
give for them? Yes, can you send flowers absolutely. after? Absolutely. I do that. I do that often. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, Jamie, thank you. Thanks, you can Lisa. find more great tips and trends by checking out Jamie's website, 5 to Fab. And to get there, you can always visit us first at thebroadcasttv.com. Click on today's links. Coming up next, when it comes to all the negative things in the news and in our world in general, how do you keep yourself from falling into the anxiety trap? We're talking with psychologist Sylvia Gearing about that next. Stay with us.